Hi friends, uh, very good morning and good evening. In this video, we are going to look at what is focal loss, right? And you will see how it's going to help us in solving the imbalance data set problem that we have been facing for the melanoma competition, right? And to understand focal loss, we also need to understand what is cross entropy loss, right? So we will understand what is cross entropy loss. First, we'll start with how to understand them intuitively what a cross entropy loss does and what focal loss does to cross entropy to fix uh, it in a way that it can be used for imbalanced data set okay to understand both the focal loss and cross entropy loss let's look at the paper in which focal loss was initially published so in this paper focal loss was uh, first published it's a paper for object detection so there are two kinds of object detection one is one stage detector and two stage detector uh, historically, uh, back at least in 2018, when the time, when the paper was published, one-stage detectors were inferior in terms of performance, but faster than a two-stage detector. Okay, a one-stage detector was more natural to deep learning. It was a pure deep learning-based solution, but two-stage was kind of traditional CV and modern deep learning combined together. The performance of the accuracy or the metric, the MAP, right, is way better for two stage detectors and it's st uh, slightly bad or way bad, I would say, for one stage detectors back in 2018, right. So, this paper proposed uh, two uh, important things. One is an architecture which is not novel. Uh, they claim that they claim that in the paper. It's a very simple architecture, but it's a very powerful one where they focus on the loss function. They say even with a simple architecture, tweaking the loss function could actually help improving one stage detectors, right? So, but in this video, we we'll just focus on the loss function. Understanding this loss function actually helps us to solve some part of the imbalanced data set problem that we have been facing in the Kaggle challenge, right? Even if you're not part of the Kaggle challenge, don't worry if you have this uh, video by itself would be useful to you if you want to understand what is focal loss, right? So let's understand what a cross entropy loss is. Right. We explained in some of our previous videos what is a loss function. Right? When uh, a model predicts a value for a given image or given text, right? if the prediction is matching the target, then the loss should be very low. If it's not matching, then the loss should be way higher. Right? So that's what cross entropy loss also does or any loss function does. Right? So let's look at the graph here to understand what cross entropy loss does. Right? Uh, let's say if our model predicts 0.8, right? And uh, let's say if most of the time it is correct, then we'll have a loss which is here, right? Which should be around 0 0.2 or 0 0.3, right? Which is good. And when the model is wrong, okay? And let's say it, it it's not very confident and it predicts at a probability of 0 0.2. Then the loss is, is around 1.8, 1.9 is what we would expect from a loss function but the problem happens when the data set is not balanced let's say for example here the number of examples uh, are let's say around close to 60 right and the batch size is 62 and let's say 60 of these images are non-malignant or a particular class and the other two examples are of a different class right so what happens here we'll have uh, close to uh, 60 examples falling uh, in this bucket and here in this particular loss we'll have only two examples falling in this particular loss right so what happens is this will have a dominating effect on the loss function basically the model becomes better and better in identifying the classes which falls here okay basically it becomes better and better in which it already knows to do and this does not have any impact on the model Okay. That's what happens in cross entropy loss. Now let's try to understand what happens when we use a focal loss, right? What focal loss does is when you have a prediction of 0.8, okay, and focal loss is actually a variant of a cross entropy, and one of the hyperparameter for the focal loss is gamma. Okay, now this is actually focal loss, right? The mathematical function for the cross entropy is minus log of pt. We will get into what it is. And uh, what focal loss does is it adds this particular part to the focal loss, sorry, cross entropy. It multiplies the cross entropy with this particular thing, okay? And this gamma is a hyperparameter here, okay? And these different curves that we see, the blue one is actually the cross entropy loss, where the gamma is zero, 
then gamma is equal to 0 it becomes 1 right and there are different values for gamma is equal to uh, so let's say 0.5 till 5 let's take the extreme case of 5 let's see what happens when we have gamma is equal to 5 let's say the model predicts here 0.8 right so instead of the loss being 0.2 uh, in the case of cross entropy here the loss what it happens is it becomes something like point uh, zero 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 a couple of zeros and two right? let's say three two okay and let's say there are 60 examples of these conditions right so then what happens it becomes a much a very small number right but here when the model is actually predicting let's say some value of 0 0.1 or something the loss is still higher not as high as you would expect in a cross entropy but still this can have a huge impact on what the model learns right so this is what the difference between a cross entropy and a focal loss is for cross entropy when uh, the loss is low the higher number of examples makes the loss much higher because the loss is still uh, matters right the focal loss what it does is for the most confident cases the majority of the classes by the majority of classes present it reduces the loss considerably okay let's say by a factor of thousand or something and reduces the uh, loss of the minor class slightly so that that will have a higher impact right so that's what the, this is the difference between focal loss and cross entropy loss we'll also so this is one way of understanding it right this is the way of understanding what is focal loss just by looking at the graphs the output of the loss functions We'll also try to understand what is focal loss by looking at the mathematical equation for cross entropy and focal loss and then we'll try to go and see the implementation of focal loss in PyTorch. So understanding a new deep learning concept from different ways actually helps us. So let's look at the mathematical formula of what is focal loss. So before we look at the mathematical formula, we'll also look at what is cross entropy loss in how does it look in mathematics okay uh, so if you see here so in the paper right which we have been reading the focal loss paper uh, the math they have given a cross entropy loss equation okay it's very uh, it, very simple formula all it does is uh, is a target value value the y is a target right if it's one right all we do is we apply a minus law of probability if it's anything else in this case it's going to be minus one or zero then we apply a minus log of 1 minus p right that's what the cross entropy loss is so the next section what they have done is they have just re-returned it in such a way that the cross entropy loss is minus log of pt okay where pt is this basically what they have done is they've removed the log and they put it outside the equation right? it's very simple that's what we do all the time in programming so what happens this is a cross entropy loss now we understand what is cross entropy loss so in for focal loss what we do is we add this extra parameter it's not the min the minus is already part of cross entropy so technically it is just 1 minus pt power lambda why we do that is because when we are confident when the model is confident right let's say it predicts something like 0.8 then we want to take a small portion of the cross entropy we want the loss to be lower but when the model is less confident let's say it's let's say it gives a probability of 0 0.2 0 0.3 then we want to penalize the model more right that's why we add this number 1 minus pt power gamma that's it turns out to be a number let's see what the number is going to be okay let's so look at this example so we calculated the binary cross entropy using the torch function itself let's say our model predicts two values 0.8 for one example and 0.2 for one example our typical cross entropy loss is going to be something like 0.3 okay here the model is actually confident it's close to the prediction so we are saying 0.3 good and here if you see uh, model is actually not very confident it's predicting 0.2 but the target is 1 right so the loss is higher 0 0.5981 right so what do we do is we add some factor here some let's say uh, fc with let's say call fl fl is the focal loss right what is focal loss here so this is what is focal loss 1 minus pt pt is the probability which is 0 0.8 right the target is 1 so we just take the probability 1 minus 0 0.8 power something what is that something we saw in the paper they 
ended up trying different values of gamma, right? Starting from zero, that is cross entropy, you don't do anything. 0 0.5125, and they also mentioned in the paper that the value two actually works good for them. So let's also look at the value two, what happens. So basically what happens when you do uh, change these values from two to five or 10 or something is your, the factor by which you're multiplying the cross entropy loss changes, right? Let's stick to two. What happens is when you apply one minus 0 0.8 power two, I actually have not multiplied this. Let's comment this out and let's run it. Right, we get 0 0.039, right? And when you actually multiply with that with the binary cross entropy, when you see actually you get a small loss, right? But when the prediction is actually 0 0.2, right? What happens? One uh, minus, I'm not sure if I multiplied this or not. So let's do this. So it says 0 0.64 of the cross entropy loss right so basically we are taking 64 percent of the cross entropy loss basically we are taking higher number of the cross entropy loss so that's what the uh, mathematical formula of the focal losses right so it all it does is one minus pt power gamma right though it's very simple to come up with that particular formula basically uh, to penalize the model only when the predictions are lower and to uh, give it a very low loss when the model is very confident so that it helps in the imbalance it's a very important very important thing right so now we have looked at the mathematical part of it now let's go and try to understand the uh, focal loss in a programmatical way right so now what we're going to do is we are going to club our intuition our mathematical equation and the PyTorch knowledge that we have, right? So uh, there are multiple implementations of focal loss available on the internet. So I took the one which is from the Retina Internet uh, PyTorch repository. If you remember, the model architecture is called Retina Internet that came from the paper, and NVIDIA has an implementation of that. And they have the loss function implementation. So let's take a look at that, right? Uh, so that the gamma is something which we have already covered the gamma is a hyperparameter how much times you want to in, uh, What do you say how much times you want to increase it right? Let's say power of the loss is 1 minus pt is 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 How much time you want to multiply 1 in power 2 or power 4 or power 5 you want to multiply that's what gamma is And alpha is like a balancing factor basically for positive examples you want to consider a separate uh, Factor and for negative examples you want to consider a separate factor for the total fact focal loss and in the paper it is published that a balanced focal loss is actually works much better than a non-balanced focal loss. So let's look at this a bit separately uh, at the end of this video. Okay. So what we are doing is, if you look at uh, most of the PyTorch models, right? Uh, some of them you will see that the sigmoid function is not applied at the end of the model. Instead of that, we use a binary cross entropy with logics that is used for numerical stability that it becomes very useful when you use things like mixed position or distributed computing and when you actually apply sigmoid and when you try mixed position even pytorch ends up throwing a warning saying that's not recommended and sometimes you will see it's, it fails right uh, but for calculating focal loss we need it so what we do is we apply sigmoid and we store it in a separate variable so this forward is actually when uh, it's, it's a typical neural network model it can be used as a loss function Okay, I see we are, uh, if you see we are subclassing from nn dot module. So nn dot module, we would have seen in our previous videos that will contain the init and the forward. Okay, nothing interesting happening in init except the initialization. We are initializing alpha 2.25 and gamma to 2. And the forward, what, what is happening is we are calculating cross entropy loss. Uh, for the cross entropy loss, we just use logics. And for calculating the focal loss, we need the PT, right? For PT, we are, have to apply this we have to apply the sigma so we have applied it and let's not look at the alpha for now uh, let's forget the alpha and let's look at it at the end of the video and here what happens is pt right so, so we, once we apply the sigma all we get is probability but for do a pt what we have to do we have to apply the if else condition if y is equal to one do something else do something the way we do it in pytorch is using something called torch.var okay so torch.var you have three uh, parameters that you pass one is the condition itself like if what condition so here the target equal to equal to one if the condition is true then don't do anything to the probability return the predictions as it is if it's false then subtract it by one 
right? This is what we calculated PT equal to, uh, we said uh, red, else 1 minus PT, right? 1 minus predictions. So that's what is happening here. And now we are multiplying this with cross entropy loss. Once we are done with this, we are multiplying with this with something called alpha, right? Now let's look at what is alpha to understand the complete focal loss implementation. So till now we have uh, looked at what is focal loss, what is cross entropy loss and there is one parameter called the alpha that is also another hyperparameter that we can tweak which we have not looked at it right. It is not actually part of focal loss but it is part of something called balanced cross entropy loss right. So if you look at the paper they talk about it slightly they call it as a balanced cross entropy and I think it comes from a different paper not from not originally from this paper. So what they do is to the cross entropy loss which is a log of pt they multiply it by something called alpha t okay what is alpha it belongs to a number from 0 to 1 okay it can be any number from 0 to 1 and it's going to change for the classes right let's say for the class 1 it is alpha for the class 2 which is in generally it's a binary cross entropy right so it's 0 so it's 1 minus alpha right so this is what happens for class 1 it is actually alpha and for the class minus 1 here or 0 it is 1 minus alpha right so what impact it has is uh, let's look at in a code uh, code so it makes things much simpler right so to demonstrate it we need a bunch of targets right and the bunch of targets have to be uh, balanced and unbalanced so what we are doing is we are creating a targets by saying let's say torch dot rand of 10 give me 10 numbers i'm asking touch to give me 10 random numbers and i'm saying if the probability is less than 9 keep them as 0 and if the probability is greater than 9 0.9 is not 9 then let's keep it as 1 right here also we are using the torch variant of if and else we can use the typical variant of pytorch uh, sorry python where we write if some condition do this else do that but this variant is actually faster and it runs on GPU also, right? So we get this target where we have all zeros and one, uh, there's only one target here. That's let's say in this case, it's the malignant or there is some box, some image in the box, right? So what we do is let's say uh, the typical value of alpha is 0.25, right? So what happens is for a uh, target of one, it's, it's going to be, uh, 0.25 and when it's not 1 it's going to be 1 minus alpha that's going to be 0 0.75 right so how do we achieve that we multiply this targets into alpha okay we add it and we say 1 minus targets into 1 minus alpha so this will be the alpha value that basically we are converting one scalar value to a tensor of values which contains different values for the alpha which get multiplied right basically for 1 here let's say 7 1 it's going to be 0.25 we don't do anything right and for the rest of the values 0 we make it 0.75 okay this is uh, used for balancing the uh, cross entropy loss which is said to improve the uh, metric for the object detection right you can also uh, tweak the values of alpha say from anywhere between 0 to 1 you can keep it 0 0.1 or 0 0.8 or 0 0.9 and see how it impacts your model performance so the two hyperparameters for the focal loss most of the uh, loss functions like mean square error don't have hyperparameters but the focal loss have two hyperparameters one is your alpha which is help for balancing cross entropy and the second one is gamma which is going to tell how much compounding effect you wanted on the a factor which you use to multiply the cross entropy so that's what is alpha right we try to understand focal loss from different ways right so let's try to summarize what we have looked at right we looked at what is focal loss uh, it's primarily designed for object detection but we saw how it can be useful for handling any imbalanced data set problems right we also looked at the issues common issues that are faced with the cross entropy loss particularly when the data is highly imbalanced. The third thing we looked at is the two key parameters, the alpha and gamma, how it can affect your focal loss and how it actually changes cross entropy loss to adopt for imbalanced data set. We also looked at the implementation of focal loss, right? 
so now it's time for you to go and try focal laws in some of your classification problems or in the Kaggle melonoma competition which is ongoing which is I think we are at the last week of the competition you can go and try try to change different values of alpha and gamma and see how it affects the the score uh, or if you're watching this video post the competition try to use this focal loss for some other examples some other data sets and see how it impacts if you like this uh, video uh, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel if you have any comments or suggestions or if you want us to make a video on some of your favorite topics please comment in the comment section we will be happy to look into it and we'll try to make a video in the future thanks for watching bye bye